So I'm going to be showing you how you can get started with TypeScript and Node.js. This is aimed at beginners that have no experience with TypeScript or very little. And I'm going to be taking you from scratch. I have an empty folder right here. And we are going to get you started on how you can start a Node project that is using TypeScript. Now the first thing, I would highly recommend using VS Code for this as your text editor because it works fantastic with TypeScript. You're going to get IntelliSense and hoverable types and whatnot. It works great. Uh, but either way, you're going to want to open up an empty folder. We're going to start by doing npm init-y to give us a package.json. So once we have that, we are going to add TypeScript to our project by saying yarn add TypeScript as a dev dependency dash D there. Uh, and then we are going to initialize our project with TypeScript. We need to create a tsconfig file, which basically stores the options for our TypeScript compiler. So I'm going to say mpx tsc init. So this is the name of the TypeScript compiler, or how you invoke TypeScript. You'd say tsc, and this will compile stuff and whatnot. And we'll deal more with this in a second. And then mpx just lets us run uh, scripts. All right, so we create a tsconfig.json file right here. After this video, I recommend just reading through this. There's a lot of options in here, and it's good to know when you want to turn things on and off. And they have some nice comments on why you may want or why you may not want something. Okay, so first thing is we want to start running uh, some code. So we are going to say source slash index.ts. And I'm just going to console log hello from TypeScript. So I want to execute this code. How can I go about doing that? Note, I did a dot ts. That is the uh, indention or the uh, file type for TypeScript. So what we're going to do first is we are going to compile this into JavaScript or uh, transpile it into JavaScript. So we're going to say build. Uh, so we're going to create a new script in our package.json. And then we're just going to run tsc. So that's going to execute uh, a TypeScript. And it's going to build our a TypeScript file into a JavaScript file. So, all right, let's run that. Yarn build. And we have a JS file now. And we can see our console log there. And once we have that, we can just say node source slash index.js. Um, and so that's how you can run your TypeScript code. You compile it and then run it with node. Now, this is kind of annoying to do every single time in development. So we can use a library or a module called tsnode. So what tsnode does is it allows us to just point it at, so we're going to say script start tsnode source less index.ts. So we can just point it at a TypeScript file, and it's going to run it. It's going to compile it and run it with node for us. So now I can just say yarn start, and it's going to run it no problem. And this is basically the workflow of how to run it. Now, if you're, running, if you're working with something where you're constantly making changes or you're, say, using a server, um, a next thing that's really nice to use is called tsnodev. So we can install that, tsnodev. And what this does is it's basically going to watch our files, and whenever we make a change, it is going to uh, restart the server. So we're going to say dot, dash dash respawn. And then that will uh, restart stuff. Uh, I don't know if this will actually do anything since we don't, we're not starting a server. Uh, it looks like it is going to wait. So let's come over here and say hello to give it a save. You can see it re-executed it. So that's pretty handy. Uh, you can also do this with a package called Nodemon or Nodemon, as I like to say. And I should have installed this as a dev dependency. Um, so let's just move this up here for a second. There we go. Uh, if you want to use that, sometimes this doesn't work with Windows computers or whatnot. You can do that. So I'm going to call this dev. And you can say no daemon dash dash exec. And then we're going to say tsnode source slash index.ts. Basically, we're saying no daemon is going to watch our files and it's going to execute tsnode whenever we make a change. All right, so let's do that. Ran our code, make a change, and uh, bam. So you can ch choose one of those. I've been using TS node dev, but it really depends. Some projects, one's faster than the other. All right, so the next thing is we want to start interacting with other libraries. We can easily interact with TypeScript libraries, but we're also going to want to integrate with JavaScript libraries. So for example, I may want to use the Express library. 
uh, oops, we should do yarn add express. So this is a JavaScript library. Now I want to be able to know the type definitions, whether it's a number, what the function signature is, all this fun stuff about all these express values. So some people have basically made some or written some TypeScript definitions uh, for this JavaScript code so we can know what the values are. So we can add this to our project by saying yarn add types slash express. And now there's also a good package we want to install called at types slash node. So this is going to give us access to type definitions for node.js packages or uh, packages that are built into node. So what do I mean by that? Well, now when I import from uh, FS, for example, we say, I don't know, let's do write file. If I hover over here, we can actually see the entire signature of this function. I can see that I'm supposed to pass a path in, which can be a string. And by the way, these pipes mean or in TypeScript. So string or number or buffer or URL is how you would read that. Uh, so let's just also, let's just go through this real quick. So that's the type of the path. Then there's this second parameter called data and it can be of the type any. Then there's a third parameter called options that can be of, the, that is of the type write file options and then there's a callback so this is of the type is a function um, right there and then lastly this write file function returns void so that's how you can read these things and see what they return so because we are interacting with node.js which is written javascript or at least it does not written in typescript we can get the types for it uh, by installing third-party packages that are called at types. So how this works is uh, not all packages have this, and we're gonna talk about how you deal with that in a second, um, but you will install them, the name of the package, so express is the name of the package I wanna install types for, so I say at types in front of it. Um, so pretty much anytime you add a package, you'll also try adding the types for it, that way you get information about it. Okay, so that is that. So let's talk real quick about how we deal with packages that we don't know information about. Right, so I, I want to know this stuff, but sometimes you, you can't. Some JavaScript libraries don't have it. So like, for example, let's say I want to use the library short ID. Now this one I do know for a fact does have it, but let's say it doesn't have it. So now if I import from short ID, and I'm gonna say generate, all right, so I can say generate here. We can highlight that and we can see we get just no information about it. So that's what happens when you don't have types. You also see if I hover over this, it says could not find a decoration file. It even tells us we can try installing it by doing this if we want to. But what do we do if we do not have the types for it? So scenarios come up for that. And for that, I usually create a file or a folder called like types or uh, types or at types. And then I'll create a file in here called shoreid.d.ts. So basically, I pick the name of the module and then do .d.ts. And then here you can say declare module and then short ID. So basically what I'm doing here is I'm declaring that this can be of any type. So this is just anything. We don't know what the type definitions are. We're just saying TypeScript, don't bother me. Uh, this is just gonna be anything, all right? Um, now you can actually come in here and declare the types. We're not gonna get into it in this video because actually these days I rarely do any kind of type declaration. Most of the time you can install types for JavaScript packages because TypeScript is getting very popular. But you may need to occasionally do this to get to get TypeScript to stop yelling at you. So it's good to know about that. All right, so let's let's continue on. So we have import from Express. So let's import our Express, and we're going to say const express or app is equal to Express. All right, and because we installed the types for this, let's see why is it so mad at me? You can hover. So this is you'll know is whenever you're using TypeScript, you're going to get red squigglies now everywhere. Also good to know, like, for example, I'm hovering over this and I'm like, duplicate identifier express, what is it even talking about? So there's going to be scenarios that come up where the TypeScript compiler is either lagging, it's slow. In these cases, I hit command shift P and it brings up the command palette here for t uh, VS Code. And then I just say TypeScript restart server. So if you type TypeScript, it'll come up, restart server. And so what that's going to do is it's going to restart and you see once it's restarted, it's not mad at us anymore because really my code was correct. So sometimes you need to do that to make sure it's okay. 
All right, so I'm going to say app.listen. We're going to listen on port 3001. And we can just say started. So now, let's say I want to say app.get. And I want to say, now notice, we get some nice IntelliSense here. We got a request handler. Oh, whoops. I just like turned insert mode on. All right. So what I want to show next is let's say we have uh, this request object here and I want to know more about this thing. Because we're using TypeScript, we actually don't even have to look at docs to know information about stuff anymore. I freaking love this. So here's the thing. So we can see if we hover over this, this is of the type request, but that's pretty much useless to us. We don't know anything about this. We can get some IntelliSense by just saying rec dot and we can see all the properties on it. Another cool thing that we can do is we can right click and we can say go to definition or peak definition or go to type definition. These are all helpful. So if I hit command and click, I can also do that too. Um, it looks like it's lagging a little bit. And then we can peak the definition. Uh, we don't want to do that. Thought it would take us to the thing. Let's just go to get type definition. That's best. Uh, that sometimes it doesn't take it. I uh, sometimes uh, you have to do type definition. That's what I wanted to show anyway. So let's go to that. So here we can see is the interface that the request is. And so I can actually go here. And when you get more familiar with TypeScript, this is going to start to make more sense. And you can see the type definition for the request. So I can see all the different properties on it and what those property types are. And I can just look around here. And I can do whatever I want to here. So I can see the IP is a string. IP, IPS is a string array and whatnot. So that's just a good to know about that you can go in and get more information about that stuff. All right, so next up is uh, you're going to run into weird stuff with TypeScript where stuff just is not working. What do you do? So what do I mean by that? So let's say I want to say add the object name on here. So I'm going to call my request object dot name is equal to Bob here. We're going to see it says property name does not exist on the type request. So this may look super foreign to you if you're not used to TypeScript, but this is a very basic error. What it's saying is we just looked at the type definition and nowhere in here did it tell us in this interface that there is a name property that's a string on there. Um, yet we're trying to assign one here. So whenever you get into these cases where you want to do funky stuff where TypeScript is not is you know not flexible enough for you, you can basically escape these things by casting it. So we can cast the value of the type. So we can say as any here, and then it's going to stop complaining. So this is basically your escape hatch. Is you can cast this object to anything you want. You can also, if you want to, assign it up here. You can say colon any. So this is how you declare the type of a function parameter. So I'm going to say type is any. And so now this thing can be any. But as soon as you give, say type any on this thing, we have no idea what it could be. But it allows you to do whatever you want. So I could do rec.bob. It's not going to be mad at me. And I can see the name and I can console log it now. So this is good to know about whenever you get into situations where you you're, you know your code is right, but the TypeScript compiler is complaining to you, you can always uh, escape with any. And I recommend doing that whenever stuff comes up, and then you're slowly going to get more familiar with TypeScript, how to solve errors and whatnot, and you can get rid of these uh, later on. Okay, so next up is you're going to run into things with undefined. So let's say I have a function here. Um, let's call it just add. So we're going to say a, b, and we're going to turn a plus b. So the next new thing you have to realize is when you start creating functions in TypeScript, TypeScript needs to know what the types are. You can see how it's saying it's parameter a implicitly has type any. What does it mean by that? Well, it just means you need to put a type on this guy. So we're going to say number, number. And if I hover over add, again, I can see IntelliSense. I can see what the values of these are. And I can see that this thing returns a number. And if I want to be explicit, at the end of the uh, thing here, I can put a colon, and I can say number, and I can explicitly say what the type is. Again, if I start doing string, it's now going to bark at me because I'm adding two numbers here. Let me do something like that to uh, turn into a string now. All right, so that's just a little syntax stuff. Um, now let's say we introduce a undefined variable. So basically what this means is I can possibly not uh, return the value. So or pass the value. So right now if I call add, it's going to be mad because I'm not passing in the two parameters. So now if I say one, two, it's now happy because I'm passing in A and B. Now what I can say is I want B to be optional. All right. 
how we do that is we put a question mark right here. And so now it's not going to be mad at us only passing in one here. But what it is going to be mad at is we can't do a number plus undefined. So the way you deal with this, and you're going to see this error all the time. It says object is possibly undefined. You're going to run into that all the time. Whenever you get this, what you need to do is you need to say if b, do something else. If you do not get b, do something else. So in that case, uh, if b, we're going to do that. Otherwise, we're going to return a plus 0 or something, right? which would just be a. Um, and so you, that is one case. Now there's going to be cases, again, where this comes up. Uh, and this is basically where TypeScript uh, inferred it for you. It inferred that we have an if statement here, so we know that b is not undefined, so you can add it. There's going to be cases where TypeScript does not realize it. TypeScript is dumb sometimes. Even though you've checked it and it tells you it's still undefined, what do you do? Well, if you do an exclamation point, it basically asserts that you know this is not going to be undefined or just leave me alone, right? Like, hey, I just want to do this. Stop telling me. Stop complaining. This is also another escape hatch. I really recommend not using it, though. I rarely use this, but you can do uh, tsignore. So it's a comment at tsignore if you want the, t the compiler to just ignore it. If you want the line to act like, for example, some JavaScript wonky stuff, you can do that. Use this very sparingly. I much prefer casting stuff to uh, any. Also note, you can cast this to other stuff as well. Like I could just cast this to a number as well. That works. So you can cast these to different types, right? But anyway, so that's gonna come up a lot is undefined. Use an if statement, or if you know it's defined, you can add an exclamation point like that, and uh, that's how you can avoid it. And it's gonna happen with objects too. Um, and that, I think, is all I wanted to talk about, at least starting off with TypeScript and uh, Node.js. I guess the other thing we should mention real quick is I talked about interfaces a little bit earlier. This would be good to know about. Almost everyone asks, when do I use an interface and when do I use this thing called a type? So interface, and I might call my interface um, params, and A is a number, and B is a number. So this is me defining an interface, which is just means an object, which has the uh, two values here. We're going to call x is going to be of the type params. So now I set x here as an object, which has the properties a and b. So now I can just say x.a plus x.b, right? But I could also define this as type, type params2, right? And we could do that as well. So some people get confused about when to use interface, when to use type. My suggestion, what I always do is I create interfaces for objects and I use type for everything else. So for example, if I want to say the type of a function, you can do that. So it's, for example, it's type fn. So I just made a function that takes no parameters and returns void. But if I wanted to type my add function, we could say a is equal to a number b is equal to a number, or if we can use our interface here. All right, so we're gonna say x is params, and this is gonna return a number. So now I can say this is gonna return add, right? This is the value of add. And then I don't have to define it here anymore because I defined the whole function right here. So those are some other things. Basically, now that you're using TypeScript, what you do is you start coding stuff, and then you listen to the TypeScript errors and try to fix them. Um, so now we're passing this in wrong. We can do a is one, b is two. Uh, but there you go. That is how you can get started. You're ready to start working with TypeScript and uh, Node.js. Go ahead and get started making servers and whatnot. You are ready.